two cameras. I'm going to make a, a short movie about what I'm doing today and uh, we'll go from there. First what I did was is I cut a pattern out for the elevators which are here. No, this, this is for the uh, stabilizer. I did one half and then just flipped it over. Then I cut it out of half inch. <clears throat> when I first started it was 1.4 ounces and after cutting this out we're at uh, 0.65. So that's respectable. Uh, I did make a pattern. I don't see it here handy. Oh, here it is. I made a pattern for the elevators. And I cut two of those out. I put them together and sanded them to the same shape. So they're exactly the same. So now, uh, according to the plans. These are hollow, but I'm not going to do them hollow. I'm going to leave them at 3 8. <coughs> Excuse me. And Billy's were half inch. That was 3 8 covered with 16. I'm going to leave them at, uh, at 3 8 and sand an airfoil into them. And I've shown how I sand an airfoil, but I'll show it one more time. What I do is, the reason why I'm going to leave these solid is, is I'm going to use my pocket hinges. But how I, how I sand these, sand the airfoil in, is I use the finger method, and I draw a center line down the center of the... Uh, of the piece. And that's the center. So obviously we're not going to sand to a to a point. So I come in a sixteenth of an inch and I draw another line next to it. Now some people use the rod method, and there's nothing wrong with that. But once you see an airfoiled uh, elevator or flap, it, there's no comparison to the way it looks. And, and for strength, these are stronger. And then I make another line, so we end up with three lines in the center. Now, there's two ways to do this. Some are real allergic to balsa dust, while others are not. So, some people take a plane, and you can do that. You can plane off this edge. Matter of fact, I'll do uh, two of them on camera. So, we're going to plane this edge off down to our line and you know that's relatively fast you're still going to end up having to sand but it does eliminate some of the sanding dust remember what I told you about planes this is a hobby coat plane I see so many guys when I go to their shop they got this blade sticking out you know, 
a sixteenth of an inch. You don't want it sticking out that much. You only want it sticking out maybe ten thousandths. I've done the one side already. So that's basic roughing the, uh, the piece out. Now for sanding, I have this block here. This is a, a body shop 30 grit sandpaper and I take a large block, this is 30 grit. one side now this is not this this movie here my Thunderbolt movie will be a, a movie not a stream It's relatively straight, so we're going to have to uh, straighten it up. So we got one side roughed in. Now let's go to the other side. And all these, all these things that I show here are uh, acquired skills. Do I expect you're going to be able to do it the first time? No. <laughs> you might do it, but it, it's, it's not going to look like If you look at the top guys' airplanes at the Nationals, they all look like the same guy built it, except for there are some signatures and sanding. This has become <clears throat> sort of sort of my signature since the 90s. The way the I eat sand flaps and elevators. To be honest, I have tried the rod method, and I have done it a few times, but. There's a couple of things with the rod method I don't like. First, they warp easier. It, uh, I don't know why. It's kind of like why does a piece of wood warp when you cut it, but it doesn't when you sand it. Okay, we got that done. Now let's do the, uh, let's round off the center, the uh, leading edge. So, I think I've shown this once before too, but nothing like uh, reminding you. Teaching is reminding, learning is remembering. So, I, I've got the center point there, and we're going to come back. Now, a lot of people bevel this line, and that's alright, where you angle, angle from this line to the center. And that's all right if that's what you want, but we're using pocket hinges. So I want to round this. And the only reason the line is there is for reference. I still have to 
build that classic airplane. I got so much work to do. Okay, that was it. Okay, we've uh, that was 30 grit sandpaper. Now we're going to switch to 80 grit. And still using those, uh, matter of fact, let's use a smaller block. Still using the arcing motion. You want to start in the center and arc out to the end. You want to be sanding a radius in it. And the thing about sanding that radius is, you'll notice, first I'm going this way. And now I'm going to go back the other way in a crosshatch motion. And if you don't, it won't it won't be symmetrical. It'll have flats in it. Nice. I had an eyebrow just a little bit ago. An eyebrow hair that was two inches long. And it kept getting in my eye and I thought it was something flying around. That was that was a little difficult. <laughs> As I stated, these are not going to be hollow. Come down to the uh, to the second line that you drew from the center line. It'll be an eighth inch all the way along the line. And that's how fast we sand. I sand flaps. So now I'm going to want to clean up this radius, and I take uh, the sandpaper in my hand. We've made a radius. But we need to finish it. Come back. You sand the pen line off. Now, this center line here we can leave so we can get our hinge pins aligned correctly. I don't know how this camera is working. I can only see the one to my left, the monitor. The monitor for this one is in the other room. And I probably should bring it in and put it on my laptop. The problem is, is that video files are so large that it's just not feasible. So I sight down, down the uh, flap, make sure that we got it symmetrical. We don't really yet. And on this Thunderbolt build, I'm really not in a hurry. I have plenty of things to fly. I'd like to get this done for Brodex. But if not, my main focus for Brodex this year is going to be scale. I guess when you get... When you get enough, you fly scale, like Jack Sheets told me.
Yeah, she told me year ago, I, years ago I should be building a flying scale. I want to get with Dave Platt. That guy really knows some... He's a good builder. Okay, we have it roughed in. I'm going to take the next grade down. This is a 180. You know, when you're watching me do these videos, it's very boring, and I probably will do a lot of cutting and editing on this. Because of all the sanding, repetition, and time that it takes to do these airplanes. I mean, who'd want to sit there and watch me sand for 400 hours? And I'm watching my demographics uh, for my channel. And on these videos, we're only looking at about a 15-minute retention rate. And what that tells me is you guys only want to see 15 minutes worth. Okay. And we're going to see what the difference in weight is in this thing. Remember when we started, it was 1.4 this. I think it was, yeah, I, I remember right. It was 2.5 ounces, 2.5 for both elevators and the stabilizer. And that is totally, I mean, the other one I had was in the threes. But... I'm shooting for, I'm shooting for lighter, lighter is better, and the guys that don't think so can't build them, that's why they don't think so. Now we're on a 320 with my Durablox. The nice thing about doing the, doing it this way is I can start finishing now. I mean, this is... We'll get this uh, sanded off, and I probably will. I'll put a coat of clear dope on it and let it set and do the other one. And, be, you know, even though we haven't got it hinged yet, I do have the hinges made. And I do have my, my horn. So when it comes time to put it all together, it's already finished. Just like the wing. Okay, let's see what it weighs. This part here. 0.45. So now, we were at two and a half. One point one point six five one point six five two and a half. So we we've dropped over an ounce off off the elevator and stabilizer. However, we're going to have to add the ribs back in and the sixteenth inch sheeting. So I'll probably go over to my wood pile and uh, find what you know, the lightest pieces of wood that I have, and we'll cut the skins and see how much weight it's going to pick up, because it started at two and a half, and if it doesn't weigh less than two and a half, 
all this business of cutting it out was a total waste of time. I don't know if you add it back in glue and and all that, <coughs> it would have been better to get a half inch piece and forget it. <laughs> and I have had some good wood where a half inch piece would have would have weighed less. But that wood is hard to find anymore. I think that's what uh, Billy builds his airplanes out of. Unobtainium. You know, if you can't get it, it's... Uh, P51 a little bit today. I did do some things, but I need to add some more dope to get the dope drying. Gotta have that done by the end of the year. Cause I think he wants to come pick up. It looks like I'm gonna get four of them done for the end of the year, so. a nice piece there. You can tell it's good wood. Good, clear, light wood. Now I said I was going to uh, show you another way, but this way works so good I'll probably do it again just like that. The other way is just by sanding instead of cutting with a plane, but, you know, tomato, tomato, it's, it's all the same thing, as long as you end up with the same results. <sighs> the trick is, is not to work yourself to death. Light, it's ridiculous, but I want it straight. Anyway, one's done. Now let's do the next one. Now I'm, <clears throat> I'm probably going to cut the camera. Cut one camera anyway. The one recording on, on the front is already looping to the computer, so. Not that bad, but my primary camera here, this is camera one and camera two. Camera one is, is a Sony, and it's a 20 gig hard drive camera. And I have to download it onto the computer. And I have to take it into Wondershare editing software. Camera two, here is uh, downloading right straight to the computer. And uh, the minute I stop all this business, it's already uploaded. So there's not much. I mean, I'm just trying to get out all this editing. Um, everything you see me do on camera here. 
I have to edit it. I'm working twice as hard to do the same job. Okay, I'm gonna cut the camera. Cut the camera and we'll uh, upload this stuff. We just tried to make this about a half an hour long. I didn't want it to run forever. Because it seemed like I said.